the Pittsburgh Steelers are looking at alternative routes on their offensive tackle position. And yeah, they have options, but there's another one that might make some sense. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk and subscribe anywhere. You get your podcast today. Let's talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive tackle position right now. It's in question and it's in limbo. Chuk Sikor 4 is in concussion protocol. He was limited in practice yesterday, which is a good sign as they approach their Monday night matchup. And I think Mike Tomlin and company, they feel very optimistic that Chooks will be on the field on Monday night, but it raises a huge question. What if he's not? How do the Pittsburgh Steelers prepare for life without Chooks for? How do they prepare for a right tackle when really they only have left tackles that are off the bench that can provide depth? Right now, the Pittsburgh Steelers are practicing with Dan Moore still at the left tackle and Broderick Jones at the right tackle because Dan says that Broderick is a more natural right tackle, and that's credit to his Georgia days. At Georgia, every other day or every other week, they would switch sides, so he would have to practice on the right side and the left side to assure that he was ready for both. From what I've heard from Broderick Jones and George Pickens and Darnell Washington is that Georgia practices are wild, man, and those guys are more ready for anything than anyone I've ever met any team I've ever worked with, any player that I've ever associated with, the the Georgia Bulldogs, they are ready to take on a hurricane if a hurricane is thrown their way. But Broderick Jones feels ready to be a right tackle if called upon. And after not practicing there all summer, you have to question why the move right now. But I think it's simple. Dan Moore Jr. just isn't capable of playing right tackle. He never looked comfortable there when he played it throughout the summer. He went in for a couple of plays at the end of the week one matchup against the 49ers. He looked miserable out there as well. Jukes of core four goes down and you just don't know what's going to happen. And when it comes to concussions, it's such a constant thing in the NFL that you have to be worried about the future and whether or not it's going to come back up. And the Steelers said, okay, well, we can't practice with a guy who isn't capable there anymore, so we got to switch things up and test the rookie out. And, well, the rookie, I don't know if he's doing fine, but according to Dan Moore, he's doing good enough. But raising the question about how you'd replace Chooksakor for if an instance like this happened again raises an even bigger question for the Pittsburgh Steelers. At what moment do you start to really look for a backup slash replacement at right tackle? At what moment do the Pittsburgh Steelers wait before they say, oh, yeah, we need better options here because what we have isn't it. They've acknowledged all summer long, all summer, that last year playing 16 games with their starters is not something that is always going to happen. They are pretty convinced that injuries are going to be a thing this year because they are always a thing along the offensive line and they're preparing to have to adjust to those injuries. That was the Dan Moore switching to the right side scenario. That's exactly why it happened because the Steelers needed a swing tackle. They know Broderick Jones is the future left tackle. You don't draft this guy 14th overall to have him move sides or replace Chooks for or spend his entire career as a swing tackle you draft this guy to be the franchise left tackle of the Pittsburgh Steelers even if it's not this season it'll start at some point that was their plan Dan Moore's got to be the swing guy Chooks and Dan will start while Broderick comes off the bench and he'll just play left tackle well that experiment failed and now the Pittsburgh Steelers are looking at Broderick Jones as a swing tackle and Dan Moore as the left tackle and Chooks for as a right tackle and that's their best options. I don't know what side Dylan Cook plays because he's never entered a game, and when he has practiced, it's probably been on both sides, but if we're being 100% honest, not many eyes were on Dylan Cook when he was on the field during training camp or during the preseason. They just weren't. There were a lot of other names, more exciting positions to watch, bigger position battles to keep your eye on than the right and left tackle spot or that fourth right and left tackle spot. So right now, the experiment, the plan, the safety 
concerns for the Pittsburgh Steelers or the safety net for the Pittsburgh Steelers, well, it's got some holes in it, and there are some concerns. So let me toss out a name for you, and I don't know if that name makes sense for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think there's a ton that goes into this, but it's a name that is, well, quote-unquote, generating interest. And according to Jordan Schultz, there's at least a dozen teams that are looking at this guy to acquire him and at least consider adding his talents to the offensive line. That name is former Cincinnati Bengal, Leal Collins, former Dallas Cowboy, Leal Collins, a guy who has plenty of starting experience in the NFL, who started 15 games for the Cincinnati Bengals just a year ago before tearing his ACL on Christmas Eve and eventually ending up on the pop list and then being released. And you got to question what's going on. Well, I don't know why the Cincinnati Bengals decided that they were done with Leal Collins. I think most of it has to do with their salary cap situation and the fact that they handed Joe Burrow a boatload of money and they needed to create some cap space in order to do so. Collins was supposed to take a little over $7 million of a cap hit this season. Well, I think they could reduce that. I believe that the penalty they faced was $1.2 million instead. So they saved themselves roughly $6 million. That makes sense. And with the addition of Orlando Jones and the move of Jonah Williams, you don't really need Leal Collins. You don't really need another starter. Well, the Pittsburgh Steelers are in a different boat. Chooks Akor 4 has an out in his contract next season. I don't know if he's overly impressed throughout his career in Pittsburgh. I don't know if he solidified himself as a starter no matter what and the long-term answer of the Pittsburgh Steelers' right tackle position. So you want to talk about a long-term starter. The Cincinnati Bengals seem to have one. The Pittsburgh Steelers probably don't. Broderick Jones is your left tackle. If Dan Moore Jr. can't be a swing tackle, you don't know what's going to happen there in the future, and you don't know what's going to happen there right now. If Dan Moore Jr. for some reason goes down or Chooks for stays down, The Pittsburgh Steelers are looking at Broderick Jones, who they don't believe is ready, and Dylan Cook, who definitely isn't starter capable as their offensive tackles for an offense that is already struggling. Not the best situation to be in. Collins is a guy who, yeah, I don't know how healthy he is. I doubt he's healthy right now. I doubt that he's able to walk into a Pittsburgh Steelers facility tomorrow straight off the pup list and say, oh, yeah, I'm ready to go. And I'm sure those concerns are huge, but... That's why I don't make these calls. That's why Mike Tomlin doesn't make those calls. There are doctors in place that will work and figure out just how healthy these players are, just how ready to go these players are, and nobody gets signed if you are not healthy enough to contribute to a football team or if there are major concerns about whether or not it is going to take an extended period of time for you to be able to contribute to a football team. But if those concerns are limited, If there are no concerns, the Pittsburgh Steelers can look at this and say, this is an answer at right tackle for us moving forward. We don't have to worry about Chooks. It is possibly an upgrade, depending on how you look at Leal Collins. And if he's somehow, some way able to perform this season, if doctors say, hey, yeah, by week five, by week eight, Leal Collins will be ready to go. That knee will be fine. No worries there. The Pittsburgh Steelers could look at themselves and say, well, now we have options. We have huge backup plans and a safety net that's 10 times what it was a week ago or eight weeks ago, whenever Collins is ready to play. Just a veteran presence, a starter capable presence, a guy who boosts your offensive line when offensive line was your major and first priority throughout the offseason I don't know just like Tomlin said he was satisfied with the offensive line and how they played I don't know if I agree with that one I don't think they were terrible but I don't think they were great and I always think there's room for improvement and I think Leal Collins is an improvement now that being said if you're comfortable with Chooks there's no need for this if you're comfortable with Chooks long term there's no need for this If you're comfortable with Dan Moore eventually becoming a swing tackle, there's no need for this. But if you're not, and if you're worried that one day Dylan Cook and Broderick Jones are going to have to start at tackle for your offensive line, you look for other options. 
You look, you just, you just evaluate. You show your interest. You show your hand. Mike Tomlin's got a way with words when it comes to these players, man. Everybody wants to play for Mike Tomlin. That's all you got to do. Make a conversation. See where things are at. Have a doctor check them out. Take everything from there. But it's something that the Pittsburgh Steelers should and could consider and one that makes this offensive line a lot more dangerous and a lot more safe moving forward.